But I was able to call some of you because you registered on um, Nation Builder when you signed up in RSVP. And you don't know this, but you read you RSVP for the meeting. So I had your information because I got notified of everyone that RSVP. So we'll show you a little bit later about Nation Builder. It was kind of a cool tool, if for no other reason. Did I call you? Did they ask you to take over? Did, 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 did you take over? You did very well. So did you do introductions? Yeah, all the predictions and everybody was in. So everyone's been introduced? No. No? When I heard you were late, I went and got dinner. Oh, you didn't hear it? So real quick, just for me, if you don't mind, um, tell me who you are and what neighborhood council. Christina Arbaya, I'm single queen, I'm not a neighborhood council, but I'm here because I'm interested in being part of the Panorama City one. Oh, great, excellent. I'm a stylist, Kenoga Park. Kenoga Park, excellent. Don Williams, North Ridge East. North Ridge East, excellent. Lucy Bolinski, Chatsworth. The famous Chatsworth. Uh, Colleen Pitt, North Ridge West. West, okay. Colleen Lawson, North Ridge West. West. Elliot Magan, West Hills. I called you. You did. Did you get my call? Uh, no, I accidentally called you though. You <laughs> <laughs> It was just an accident. I, was, I thought you were worried about. Budget. You know, I was I was poking the address of the place <laughs> to see if I could get a map, yeah. and then your face came on. Maybe that was when you called me. I don't know. I was going to help you with directions because you know, well, based on the results, you can see how that. I hung up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm William Kuzman, your average everyday stakeholder, and I go to all the Northridge meetings and Porter Ranch and Granada Hills and Chatsworth. Well, I know you were from here to me. So, but my home council <laughs> where I live would be Granada Hills South. Excellent. <laughs> and you are so you Lake Babawa Neighborhood Lake Council. Lake Babawa? Yes, sir. Lake and Chatsworth. You're too? Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. I said you know. Yes, sir. Carlos Ferreira, Greater Valley Glen. Greater Valley Glen. That's right. Yes, sir. I'm Dennis Ryder, and I'm here from Van Nuys. Van Nuys, excellent. Uh, Borzu Rahimi, Mission Hills. Mission Hills, awesome. Uh, Christopher Jacobo, Mission Hills. Excellent. Richard Tucker, also Mission Hills. Excellent. Alexis Tucker, Mission Hills. Mission Hills, okay, cool. Tyler Eisen, Granada Hills North. North. Renee Trinidad, Granada Hills South. South. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? I'm Katie Harris. I'm here from the Sepulveda Unitarian Universalist Society. Is that the onion? That's the onion. The onion. Yeah. Oh. And invited by Carol, who's from North Hills West Neighborhood Excellent. Council. So on the hottest day of the year, we had an election at the onion. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and we have no air conditioning. But it's interesting, also, when you whisper the trounce, have you been inside? Yeah. It's, a, uh, it's a huge, yeah, beautiful, onion-shaped building. Where is that? In uh, North Hills West. Haskell. Haskell and uh, Miller and Haskell is the cross street. So but because it, there's no corners, sound travels. It goes so when you're whispering, down. who should I vote for? <laughs> it goes all the way around. Such an interesting building. You can't talk about your mother in law because yeah. if you whisper on one side of the building, it sounds louder on the other side. Yeah, so the people in the middle don't hear it as much as, so it's really interesting. Okay, so let's talk about, um, it's, we're going to, it's Tux Boot Camp, we're going to talk about uh, outreach and communications. Yeah? You guys, you agree on that before I got here? Did you talk about priorities? Did anyone have anything in, in, that you were interested in getting? There's a lot of, a lot of stuff about people interested in websites. Websites? Okay. So, <clears throat> there we go. Yeah, you do. Right underneath the machine. Oh, there is some. Okay. Of course, that, that'll, that'll affect the level of the machine, but that's another issue. <laughs> so, put it back to me. Yeah. Can you pull up uh, Legion Valley Riverside uh, website? So, um, some folks are interested in websites. Yes? Yes. 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 Um, websites. So if you'll think of an octopus, your neighbor council strategy would be uh, <coughs> to have the website be the hub of your universe. If nothing else, you should have a landing page. And if you have nothing, you can use us. EmpowerLA.org, 
and you can, I mean, if your website fell down in the wind, it happens, right? You could use the EmpowerLA.org page as your page. And in some cases, can you go to um, the studiocitync.powerla.org? So websites, um, in some cases we could even host your website temporarily for you if you needed something more than a page. But you should have a website. Does everyone have a website? Yeah. I think so. Okay. So the second thing we're going to talk about is, uh, so what else did y'all want to, what else did folks want to talk about? I have a question. For huh? How to reach the people. Yeah. What's that? Okay. So, um, could you help me, Mr. Bruins? Town Hall Student District. Uh, um, uh, what's it called? Studio City. Studio City. So I think it's Studio City. Uh, dot Empower LA. Studio City NC. And then let's put a third one up. Okay. Um, so we'll talk about websites. And there's a basic strategy for setting up your website. And I, we take a lot of stuff for granted. Like internal combustion. I just figure you turn the key and the thing runs. And periodically they send you a bill and you pay it and that's registration. Anything short of that, I mean, serious? But for websites, that, that were good. So, so uh, let's see. So websites. Um, was there other stuff you wanted to talk about? So yes. we'll do uh, Nation Builder. We'll do Next Door, and we'll do social media. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Database. Uh, okay. Uh, Nation Builder. Well, I mean, yeah, it's related, I guess. Yeah, so it's. I'll show you a nation building. I, I, I use it in very broad terms, right. gathering it okay. and inputting so, it, etc. Good. So then, like a newsletter, sending out stuff on a newsletter. Just maintaining your neighborhood council database yeah. of stakeholders. Okay, so let's see if we can cover all these. So Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you may have some more and more power to you, but we'll try and cover these big beats. First and foremost, your neighborhood council should, this is best practices, it's my opinion, I speak for no one else but me, get a Gmail account that no one needs to know about. It's not a public account, it's what you use to anchor things. So, so you, it would be westhills at gmail.com, okay? Just get one, and that belongs to the neighborhood council. It doesn't belong to Elliot. It doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the neighborhood council, and give the access to the executive board, which should be three people. One of them's busy, one of them's out of town, one of them will answer the email, okay? One of them's angry, the other one's fighting with the first one, the third one will answer the email. You better go to Been five. <laughs> <laughs> so, we got one vote for the 51 council members of Chicago versus the three of West Hills. But the reason for this is you'll sometimes get notifications of a bill that's coming due, and if you don't pay it, you lose your fill in the blank. Okay? If it goes to an individual and that person's busy that week, you'll lose your website, your email hosting, your URL, your domain that you're hosting. You'll lose something because a bill didn't get paid or a notification wasn't given or a request was made from somebody and no one responded, so you'll get frozen. The second thing you'll do with this is you'll get a Google Voice account. You need a you need a um, Gmail account to get a Google Voice account. 
Now, the cool thing about a Google Voice account is you can actually ask for the numbers that you like. For example, if you call, what is it? 818-293-VOTE, you'll get me. 818-293-VOTE. But I'm not going to answer the phone because it's not a real phone. It's a virtual phone, and it goes to more than one person. So during elections, if you call 818-293-VOTE, depending on where we are, we just have it forwarded to whoever needs to get it. Because if you have a real phone number, then you have to have a real person sitting at a real desk in a real office. And one of the interesting calls I got recently was during a board meeting, they were locked out. Mm -hmm. So who do you call? The one number they had was the guy that was using his iPhone as the recorder for the phone, uh, for the meeting. So he couldn't even answer the phone to find out that the people were locked out. Okay, but a Google Voice will actually send you a transcript to more than one person. So again, you're not relying on someone in an office that doesn't exist with a phone that you can't answer to the voice machine that you can't, forgot the access code to. So you can have it forwarded. But you can also use it, oh, so when you register, you give it um, you can see what the numbers are, you know, in, in letters, and you can start asking it for words, and it'll give them back to you. So you can have, you can ask for West Hills, and it might say, well, yeah, we'll give it to you, but it's a 951 number. Oh, I want an 818. How about just Hills? How about W Hills? We got 258 West. Did you? Cool. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. Right? Now, if you use it, and it's public, you don't have to worry about who's got the cell phone, which sometimes happens. You have a cell phone, but then you've got an account to manage and someone's got the phone. Someone has to carry the phone. Who's got the phone? Then that person's responsible. The beauty of the, the Google Voice is it transcribes so that it goes to multiple people. Um, and so then you have some backup, plus you can agree on who's on call without having to drive the phone over and hand it to you. But even if you don't use it publicly to receive calls, you can use it when you need it, like for Instagram. Because Instagram wants a number. So over here, when it asks you your telephone number, when you sign up for your Instagram account, and one of the problems with social media, and I'm sorry for jumping around, because I just jumped from websites mm -hmm. to, Instagram. to Instagram, but you typically find the person that understands how it works and asks them to set it up, so they use all their email account, phone number, when they lose interest, you've lost all your accounts. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're hard to transfer, especially if you lost them because they're busy. Now you've turned into a nagging person saying, give us something back. It should have never been theirs in the first place. So the rule here is don't register things and pay for things with your account and your credit card. And you mean well, right? You used your credit card, you paid for the account, and you got reimbursed. But now, when I call GoDaddy, they say, well, what's the last four digits of the credit card? I don't know. What's wasn't my credit card. Well, then you can't administer the account. So what you've, in what you've innocently done is locked out the, the, uh, the neighborhood council. So get a Gmail account, get a Google Voice account, and now, Use those two, use those two numbers, we'll do that one nation building. Use those two bits of information to secure your your URL, your what's the, what's your your <coughs> universal research locator? No, no, yeah, you know, uh, what is your uh, neighbor council's name? Oh, Northwood, well, the Northwood East uh, neighborhood council, NENC LA NENC LA Dot org. So your your online name, your URL, that is. Can you go to um, who is? That's on over here. That's uh, that's you buying your name. And when you bought your name, you went online to see what was available, or someone did. And make sure that they use this Gmail account, that Google Voice account, and your P card. Not a personal credit card. And the reason for this is you'll never lose your name this way. All of this is just to anchor your name. So um, 
You can search for names here, who is. Scroll down. It'll tell you how to buy your name. It's not very expensive to buy your name. But if you don't get the bill and you lose it, someone will buy it. So there are bots that travel the universe and they buy expired names because they know you'll come and pay them lots of money for it. It's that simple. So neighbor councils lose their names every now and then. And this is how you'll not lose it because there'll be a notification will go to three people. The phone number that's listed goes to three people. Right? And so if your expiration came up, you won't lose it. The next thing is you need to host it somewhere. Um, and so, good go Daddy. So your neighborhood council uh, website is hosted somewhere. Someone has to hold it. And there are lots of hosting companies. In fact, I'll host it for you, which would be a good idea, because now I have it, and you can't have it. Because I don't want to give you access to my server, because it's my server, so I can't give you the password, which means that, yeah, yeah it, for all practical purposes, it's mine. I was doing you a favor until you realized you don't have access to it. That's not much of a favor. Yes? Back up to look. Yeah. What's a URL stand for or what is it? Well, when you go to, a, let's go to, a, let's go to Google, the blank Google page. Here's Google, right? Yeah. So right here, let's type N-E-N-C-L-A-Org. Org. It's oh, your, no, 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 it's no, your no, internet no, name. Dot org. Dot org. So whatever you type up here, this is a URL. What's it stand for? Universal Resource Locator. This could have done better. It's a bit with that universal yeah. resource so, so that's what you're yeah, what you buy. Your neighborhood yeah. council. Yeah. yeah. What's your council again? Argus West. But I mean for like our company. Yeah. It like my company is I just bought it. It was clearprint.com. Is sure. that what the URL is? Your clearprint, okay. Yes, that's what a URL is. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. That's even maybe an easier way to say it is what most people refer to as their domain name. Yeah. That's yeah. what I was okay. There you that's go. So I lots of folks buy them and never get around to setting them up. Okay. But you had a genius idea for a business, you had a genius idea for a club, so you buy the name first, the domain name. Now you own it. Okay. It might expire if you don't use it or pay for the you know, uh, renewal. But neighbor councils sometimes lose their domain names. Okay? okay? Yeah, I've heard that. And it's because we're busy. The bill came, but here, when you're overdue, I can go buy it. It, it becomes public. You see what I mean? And people do that because once you've established a brand, it has value, you can buy it from me. Okay? So, um, so the first thing you'll do is secure your domain name. The second thing is you're going to secure your hosting. The reason we're going over this is because about a dozen of you currently are in the process or will be in the process of looking for a webmaster. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so we're going to close. So you might get a really good deal at Bob's AOK -OK hosting. <laughs> but really, you're saving two bucks, and he's not going to give you the password, and he means well. I'm available nine to five. You know where I live, right? You can drop by. But the thing is, uh, you want it anchored with this email address this phone number, and you want to use the P card to pay for it. What is a P card? Uh, purchase card. Your neighbor council has a card, a credit card. Oh, okay. But when that card's okay. used, your treasurer, president, oh, okay. executive board can call up the hosting company and say, my name is whatever, because it doesn't matter, but I'm calling from the neighbor council. Here's the email address. Here's the phone number. Here's the credit card. Okay. And they'll go, okay, then I'm talking to you. But if he paid for it because he meant well and helped you out and you reimbursed him, he has to now call because he's the one guy that's got the credit card. And by the way, he doesn't want you to know the number. Right. Of course not. Because we're all private, right? So board members inadvertently, sad thing happened, a guy died in Sun Valley. 
He had paid for his credit card. He was reimbursed, but he died. So years later, when Milo called, he, they can't even go to the guy. So they had to go through all of the funding records to find the actual reimbursement slip. Years worth of, of, of slips. So this is, this is how, if you're transferring, this is how you'll uh, prioritize your steps. So the domain name, the hosting. And so the hosting is the company that's going to provide your, the support for what you've built. Okay? And so if you've got an existing website, can we go to Studio City? Um, this is, if you look at the domain name here, they don't own this domain name. It said, can you read it back there? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with my binoculars. I can't read here. I don't know. StudioCity.EmpowerLA.org. Oh, so this is EmpowerLA. But Studio City asked their webmaster to give us to give them everything. So what they it's like asking it's like buying a cabin and asking them to FedEx it to you. So it gets dismantled and sent to you. And so it came in a Dropbox. So they had no idea what was in the Dropbox. All of the elements and components and all the archives of their website. The SQL file, the database, the etc. So we reassembled it here. This is actually just a subfolder on our website. And reassembled their components, their elements, their stuff. And then we have to take out the old administrator's name and access, but now everything that's associated with that administrator disappears, so everything had to be re-linked to the president, who's the, now the administrator. But the point was to do a quick inventory of what they've got, and then to make sure that the things weren't linked to the old website, because it was coming off at another server. And they need a server that they didn't have or don't have, so this was temporary. So for Mission Hills, what you would do is ask for your stuff. You'd wanna have your ducks in a row, which is your domain and your hosting, and keep in mind that websites are made on different platforms. Let me the bottom. So typically along the bottom will be some evidence of what it is. Can you go to Legion Valley, Riverside? Typically at the bottom, and there are plenty of ways to build a web website. Elliot, what do you use? I, I do it myself. In, in the shop with wood and glue and... <laughs> no, uh, uh, what do you call it? Dreamweaver. Dreamweaver. The legend, right? <laughs> so Dreamweaver is an application for building websites. This one's created with Nation Builder. Some are templates that you can drop, customize a bit. But if your neighbor council has a website, it's either one you can just carry over or one that'll have to be reassembled on a new platform. It's a WordPress. Website. It's WordPress, great. Lots of templates, very user friendly. Drupal, Joomla, the list goes on. But you call this. Which one? A platform. Platform. It's, it's what, like a. What are you calling it? Application? Platform. So Dreamweaver and WordPress are? Well, Dreamweaver is for the serious. <laughs> OK, the not so serious. Not so serious. WordPress is probably the really easiest. Serious. Yes, Carlos? But if you're going to hire a webmaster yes. from one of the 10 approved web yep. people, they will build the site for you, and they will take care of that for you. So you're not going to learn to do that here now. Correct. No, no, I just want you to know now how to be a good shopper. I still don't un understand a, um, I don't understand internal combustion, right? But that shouldn't stop me from driving here or looking up consumer reports, uh, what car. I like the shiny one, you know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, in the back row, and then you, sir. But my concern with our WordPress, I mean, we can get it to back it up and some sort of zip file with the database and all of that. Uh, the bigger concern is what you said about the links being there and, and to the old server, and, and I'm not sure how that would affect the, the uh, mechanics of the website once it's been uploaded <coughs> onto a new host. Is there a whole lot of... Uh, um, 
work that needs to be put into that to, to get all of the links? Set? For yours, it's about eight to 16 hours, and yeah. we can help you with that. And your new web person can definitely help you with it. And we're gonna talk about, since you brought it up, the 10, Yeah. because, okay, I've been talking about cars. Have you ever been a mechanic? Have I ever been a mechanic? Yeah. No. You've never been a mechanic? In high school. No, bin to one. Ben. Oh, bin to one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> On the wall, it says, it, there's a price list, right? Yeah. It usually says, per hour. Uh, per hour, $150. If you help me, 175 If you ask a lot of questions, 200 You know what I mean? It's usually that price list. And it always, but no one actually pays by the hour because there's, when you get down to it, it makes a funny noise. So they, you don't pay them to take it around the block and come back, they give you a quote. They bid on it, so to speak. So we'll talk about the contract, because a lot of folks were put off by how many words could be used to say something that eludes me. It's like, who can read that, right? Um, so we'll talk about the contract. So to answer your question, it's about eight to 16 hours, because we did two of them. And so Studio City, we did. So the question he asked is, uh, if they were moving from one webmaster to another, they're going to get all their stuff and they want to make sure that it's all good. So they're going to shake it out, literally. And they want to make sure the links go to the right place, that they don't lose all their agendas, all their minutes, mm -hmm. um, all the great graphics, all the great customization. So on, let's go to Studio City. So on Studio City, that's all this is. This was just us making sure that it was clean. And on the back end, that the old administrator didn't have access, that the new administrators have access, and that everything is now linked to current administration. Which, by the way, can be, it's not an individual as much as a role. So administrator could be three people, right? Um, so, um, Stephen, are you saying that for Studio City, when they had this issue, that uh, they came to Empower LA, and Empower LA gave them the assistance to make this change? Yes, because John Walker was, as I'm demonstrating, words aren't that effective. <laughs> but John was having a little difficulty understanding, and I was having a little difficulty communicating, and it was actually shorter than going back and forth for us to take his components and assemble them so that he could take a look at them and do an inventory and go, this is our theme, this is our look, this is our customization, here's all our elements, here's all of our stuff, here's all of our records, here's our archives, and they're all linked to us. Okay? It's 8 to 16 hours. We only know that because we did it. And so, for this size website, 8 to 16 hours. Yes, sir. Okay, this is the question everybody wants to know. So, your department is willing to come out to each individual neighborhood council or work with each outreach committee that's trying to develop their website. You'll take the ideas from us and you'll put that together for us? And it, I, I'm trying. No. What I, yeah. you know, what. What the what people want to know, and I'm working on going to outreach committees right. and trying because everybody's trying to get a handle on this. You just said your help is available. Yeah, but not, but, uh, and I'll clarify. What please <laughs> clarify <laughs> yeah, the help everybody. that's available, <laughs> and please tell the camera who they should call to get that help. My name's uh, Mr. Guzman, and you, <laughs> <laughs> you mispronounced <laughs> it, folks, but that's okay. <laughs> so. Uh, no, seriously. Yeah, I'm, I'm, seriously, seriously, I'm going to back up and I'm going to do it again. Your website already exists. You're not asking me to build it, add a theme, or customize it. You want to transfer it, oh, and I will facilitate and help you. And I believe it takes 8 to 16 hours of human Pronting. to do it. Okay? And... I won't personally do it because there's 96 neighborhood councils and I can't. Mm -hmm. And we can't, I don't think all 96 are migrating or moving anyway at any given time. But let's say there were a dozen 
then there's a person and uh, the contract has come up. So you're not entering into a contract or using a contract person. This is just a temporary assistance in stabilizing and moving. Okay? I'm not going to help you with shopping for a template. That then would be your new relationship with your new webmaster because there you're going to ask him, I want to start from scratch. I want to reboot. I want to put a polish on it. I want it to stay exactly as it is, but I want you to maintain it. I want you to be on call and help me two hours a month. So to me, there's different relationships with a new person. We would just be able to help you with this element. How do we secure and then migrate and stabilize? Okay? Good. And that's all this is. Thank you. We didn't add anything to it. We didn't hang one set of minutes. Okay? Now, they may self-manage or self-maintain. They may have someone do it for them, but we're not adding their minutes and agendas. Hope that answered your question, and I'm going to come back to you, but I'll get Carlos first. I think the explanation there, though, that needs to be made is that that is a temporary, temporary. holding area. Yeah, that's all. It's not a permanent. Yeah. Right. Because they don't hosting. have their hosting in place, right. and their new webmaster, whoever that person is when they make that choice, should be the one that helps. Yeah. So you may not even have to do that. Yeah, it, we may not have to. Yeah. If you've got someone in place, for example, Elliot, I would right now I would be, you want me to get your coffee or anything, Elliot? I'm making friends with this guy. Mr. Dreamweaver could be your new best friend, but yes, sir, and then in the back room. Okay, so it's a temporary site. It provides all the functions that are required of the neighborhood council to have. In other words, they can go into their temporary site and put up their agendas and, you know, end time and all that stuff until such time as their new site is yeah. launched and now that can be a self-managed site yeah. or you, somebody else you meaning can, meaning nation builder is the <coughs> one that's probably best for these neighborhood councils that want to self-manage their site is yeah. this is what i'm i'm hearing well no, but true, but but yeah. my point is is how long can your temporary site be up well i mean if we haven't made it, in other words, yeah. if we haven't decided whether we're going with a paid person uh, North, or North West, NC, Don Power. if we yeah. haven't decided that we're going with a paid person on the list mm -hmm. or going to self-manage, but we know we don't want to be using who we have now, mm -hmm. how long can we hold the temporary site while the outreach committee vets the issue and gets the board to vote on it and approve it because it's a two-month process just and in that alone. You know, I, I, uh, the internet's an interesting thing. You put it up there, you can leave it there forever. Uh, and so, uh, North Hills West NC at empowerla.org. Yep. At empowerla.org has been using it for a few months. So, uh, make this an app right there. Um, yeah. Oh, I get that all. <laughs> Snap. Uh, what is it? No, I don't remember. Anyway, I don't have a limit, so I can't offer you one. The one caveat to my unadulterated, uh, filled with love service is it's not free. You need to pay someone eight hours to 16 hours. They're 20 bucks an hour. So you can get some funding assistance or some website assistance on the fly from the department. Um, and so some folks have had someone come from the department and just do their funding to catch them up. And in this case, it'd be the same principle. You'd have someone come out and do your website and get you up to speed, eight to 16 hours. So it's one or two days. So it'd be $20 an hour, $160 to $320. The hosting is separate. We, I don't care because this, North Hills West NC and PowerLA.org. So during a bad transition, right? I thought you had the keys. Who's got this host, you know what I mean? Forget about it. We just put it up. You can use this. So this is EmpowerLA.org. It is the That's weird. Anyway, so this is, is this right, Carol? Yeah. Yeah. So they're using this while they decide what they, because as you said, it takes 30 days to make up your mind, 30 days to change it, and then 30 days to vote on it, and then 30 days to yeah, reconsider. Exactly, so, exactly. Right, and then let's agree to adjourn. We agreed on okay. that, right? <laughs> so while that's happening, don't let life Passes by. So I'm sorry if it's taking a little longer. Get the Gmail, mm -hmm. get the Google Voice, secure your domain. Can you um, just Google domain search? 
You can look up to see who has your domain registered to. I looked one up the other day and it was registered to a guy I know, but he's no longer with the board. He shouldn't be on there. Uh, domain search, yeah. So how do you get it away from them? Um, I called him. And? But I threatened to send Jose over there, I said. <laughs> okay. Well, often it's just inadvertent. I registered, I forgot about it. Let's get it over, okay? And, and what, but what if it's not? And it you need to call the city attorney because it's city property. So you're the city family. So if you lose an asset, whether it's a typewriter, mm -hmm. are they valuable still? <laughs> Some of them are. It depends. It depends. <laughs> it depends. Um, let's do, uh, let's, let's, let's see if we can find there. Um, type in, um, uh, type in uh, North Hills West. NC. So click who is right here. Nope. Click right there. So, uh, well, look over here. Very small print. Transfer prohibited. Interesting. <coughs> Who's Daryl Murphy? I don't know that. Okay, so you'll see this is all the information. You want this to say the name of your neighborhood council, right? You want it to have your email, you want it to have your phone number. That's what you want. Um, here's a phone number 818 So scroll. This is public information. So okay. who would the registered name be on the account? Whoever called, but that doesn't matter as much. If this is about the organization. What really matters is that email, right, the phone number, and the credit card, and the name. But it'll still have organization. It's an admin name, right? Every organization, here's the admin organization, right? Every organization has a human that's the administrator, but you want to make sure it's not completely anchored in someone and disappears when they move. It's that, that simple, right? Mm -hmm. So now we've got it. So when it says a registered email, McGovern and Sons at Hotmail.com? Correct. Is that is that a person or is Yeah, it's a person. I know who that is. Oh. But the thing is, you don't have access to it, and you're in charge of outreach. For that, I'm just saying you got appointed. Yeah. So poof, they appointed me. How do I get in? Well, you got to go find this guy. And by the way, he was all upset at the board because they didn't agree with him, so he left. <laughs> Not true in this case, but I'm just saying. It should never be anchored to someone that can leave the room and take it with them, whether they mean to or not. Right? That's what I'm saying. Whoever sets it up, they're going to be using their... If you want to change this... To the Gmail account that you created? To this Gmail, um, which goes to three people. Okay. Your president, signatory, and outreach chair. Whoever you choose. Okay. All right? Then, when you look up your website, it's public information. But you don't have to chase anybody because it's the board. Okay. And it's anchored with a credit card that belongs to the board. So these passwords need to be in the hands of those three people. And if one person tries to change the password, guess what happens? The other two get notified. Okay? But if this person changes the password, that same person gets notified. You never know. Right. So it's public property bought with public funds. So you want it to be held by the by the team. Now that's the domain name which you already have, the hosting which you can change. Your webmaster will have some business to do with whoever's hosting because you might have uh, email accounts. They're typically attached to your hosting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you were to go to GoDaddy you'd buy an email package. Mm -hmm. Yours is, your, your emails for the neighborhood council are all nenc-la.org, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's a function typically somewhere in here that has to be administered and maintained. That's part of Google Apps in our case. Okay, and it's possible to lose that simply because it expired. Keep coming, keeping in mind, you want that notification to always go back to the three or more. So, of those neighborhood councils that are 
potentially moving something. Um, should we continue with that? Yes. I just, I'd like to ask the person who's currently hosting it, I, I'm in the middle of the situation that it has to be moved. Yeah. What exactly am I asking him for? Like everything. The website, so, what does everything mean? Yeah, I, I'll send you a written list. Okay. Um, so we'll recap this. When you get the newsletter, you'll see four photos. Looks like Mount Rushmore on the newsletter. And if you click my photo, we'll, we'll do a recap so that you know what to ask for. Okay. But you want um, domain name, passwords, access and passwords. You want, now, in your case, you, you're not going to get server passwords because you're coming off that person's server. Exactly. So then you're going to ask for a, a list of elements that I'll give you, okay? Yes, ma'am. As far as the OS thing, uh, when is the time to, for the renewal, like hours, example, as a business, it will be automatically added on my credit card. Don't on your it? credit card? Yeah. Yeah. But why this doesn't happen to that? I'm saying if they well, have a card on file, why you don't arrive automatically? You, my benevolent friend, gave them permission to keep charging you forever. Some folks are in a hurry because they're in charge and they set it up and they don't and then they forget. Um, or the credit card changes. Like, I, I had one that uh, was replaced. And so all of my links were dead and I keep getting notifications. I forgot how much stuff was attached to it. Uh, so if you have an auto pay super, I mean, I think, I think auto pays are great. Um, but you still want it to be linked in case you wanted to change some element of service, not just payment, but service. Yes. Is there a limit on to how much time the neighborhood council can buy, for example, their domain name for? Meaning there's, uh, it's been said that because the term for the neighborhood council is usually just two years, yeah. that they can't enter into a contract that's longer than those two years. So if you could set, shed some uh, light on that topic. Yeah. Um, it hasn't come up. You can go one to three years. Uh, you can do a one year reoccurring. Since it's the domain name that belongs to the neighborhood council and it hasn't come up, we can find out. But if you have contract questions, contract questions, Jeff Brill. Well, it's just that yeah. it's, e it's cheaper to buy the domain name from GoDaddy for 10 years than it is to buy it one year at a time. Right. And so, um, and how far ahead can you go we'll with find your out, purchase? That one hasn't come up yet. Um, Good. I like asking questions yeah, that haven't been answered. So, uh, so <laughs> Carol, then we're going to move to the contract with Mission Hills. Yeah. Okay. Obviously, I'm seeing the governance signs up there as being the email, the designated email contact. So, given what you told us before, really what we need to do is set up a, a generic Gmail account. Yeah for the neighborhood council itself and somehow contact GoDaddy and inform them that we need to switch that out? Well, this isn't GoDaddy. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it is. This is GoDaddy. Sorry. So, uh, uh, actually, that is, that's uh, domain yeah. research. That's domain research. You, you're going to need to switch it out. You do need to switch it out. And here's a couple of reasons why. As I look at this, down here it says the administrator's email is admin at nhwnc.net. Right, I saw and that here's too. the. Here's the, the vortex of your Gmail account's good and free, but your website just crashed because you didn't pay the bill. Oh, so they're going to send it to the email address at the website that crashed because you didn't pay the bill. <laughs> then you can't access because you lost your email That's right. account. Mm -hmm. So a local... Smartphone. Where are you from? Smartphone, the batteries. Ben, 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 where are you from? Is your email no, right? Okay. So the thing about your email not working is it's one of those great days. Oh my God, I'm getting so much stuff done today. I'm like, I'm doing well. I'm so ahead of the game. Well, that's because your email's down. Right? Look at this, inbox zero. Time for lunch. And uh, so you don't know, because what are they gonna do? Email you until your email's down. Right, your email's down. So that's some of the little stuff that occurs here. And again, this was a genius idea at the time, but at the time, people weren't thinking what's going to happen in a year, two years, or three years. What's going to happen if the treasurer didn't pay the bills? Okay? So, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to write down homework here. Homework, I have uh, Mission Hills list, right, which is going to be good for all of you, but what do you ask for? I'll give you the menu. The second thing is domains, how long? 
Should you get the tan you? By the way, it's not like you're gonna change your name. Right. Or get tired. I mean it's it's an asset. Yeah, that so why why are you going weekly? You know, okay. Yes, sir. And also you might want to send out just for the sake of everybody here how to get that one email address from Gmail to the three execs okay. and set up a pop forwarding or what do you do? I'll do that one. So I'll do uh I'll do uh Gmail, Google Voice. Um, domain, server, and now we're into the website. So on the website, there's lots of choices, and you don't have to get really into it. I like the new Subaru. Have you seen the new Subaru? <laughs> it's got four wheels, right? It's got four doors. I, I, got two, I got two little boys. It's got room in the back. I don't know. They say it'll go uphill, it'll go downhill, it stops when you want it to stop. So, you know, you might see something you like. Let's go to uh, Empower LA. Uh, go to the homepage. Uh, WordPress. You see something you like? It's just one of many. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to Elysian Valley. Uh, WordPress. No, no. Uh, the Nation Builder. It's got a pretty picture. It's got some buttons. You see something you like? You can ask your web person, let's go to Studio City. Well, you guys, Mission Hills, you work, what are you, WordPress? Yeah, we're WordPress, mhnconline.org. Mh, mhnconline.org. So there are Dreamweaver, right? So you're, yeah, Dreamweaver. Um, no, it's online. That's cash. cash, cash. Put that down. There's a problem with uh, with our website too because when I go from Empower LA to it, go I go to another website. When I go directly, I go to these. Okay. Um, so it's a WordPress. So you have got a blog on the left, right? Bit of customization, yes, sir. First thing you, you notice though, the sign the sign up sheet for the agendas is not at the top right of our yeah. website, right? So. Okay, so now you're talking about, because this is, a, they're all templates, except for Elliot who carves things out of marble. Right? <laughs> He's out there in the, in the foundry. Yeah. Right? That's the, a lot of heat. A lot of heat. Steel. Oh yeah. Steel. And wood and glue, and he built it from scratch. Popsicle sticks and pine cones and, so some folks like to build it from scratch. Some folks like a cut and paste template. In all cases, it, uh, the things either work or they don't, or they work brilliantly. And so you, you kind of want it to work, maybe even brilliantly. And there, you should have a communications policy, what you exactly want to accomplish. So at a bare minimum, what are the things that you're committing to doing? So for example, you're going to, close the gym. one, be visible, right? <laughs> so like, just put the information out there. Who are you? What do you do? Why is that relevant? How do you contact us? Like, there's a whole lot of who, what, when, where, why. Right? So be visible. Be relevant. Something should happen. If people go there every day for a few months, something should have happened. In this particular case, these are blog articles. Let's see where it came from. Ah! Scroll. Wait, back up. Keep going. Let's scroll down. I mean, you can cut and paste the LA Times if it talks about your neighborhood and um, the Power LA's newsletter because it has a message from the mayor and a message from the GM. You know, you could do a lot of cut and paste. And this is also where your communication policy should decide what be a post. And who has access. So best case practice would be uh, you as president can pro can write the president's message. You as a community a committee chair can post things about the committee. We will post anything about the city of LA, right? Just neutrally with no editorial. We'll post anything about the neighborhood as long as it's a nonprofit or a community-based organization. We're not going to do your garage sale. So sorry. So sorry. I'm not going to post. We're not doing a lot like lost dogs. Like decide what you're going to post so that it doesn't require a special meeting to approve a blog post. 
but some stuff should be automatic. So this part of it's kind of philosophical. Like what are the 10 things that you want everyone to agree on are gonna be here? And a good start is a link to the mothership, like should, can they find Empower LA? Some folks might think that, you know what, this is kind of interesting, I'd like to know some more. You're part of the city, right? So can they find the rest of the city? Go to empowerla.org. Hey, you can click right on that. What's that? I say you've got to click right on that button. Yeah. <laughs> so if you see this, see this little bar at the top? Mm -hmm. We're part of the city. Man, it's the biggest city in the most populated state and the most powerful country in the world. It's kind of a big deal, right? But don't, I'm not going to show you where it is. So you should be able to click this and find all this cool stuff. Look, there's the mayor. Okay? So from our website, if you never, if you only went like a couple of pixels from the top, you'd be able to find everything, including 311. Except they're closed um, after 445. <laughs> well, not everything. Well, Elliot. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so this is the mayor's office, right? And he's got the same thing. So now I want to go to sanitation. There's sanitation. I don't know why I'm going to sanitation, but let's go there. Huh? So let's decide what those 10 things are. What do you post? Are, are be relevant and, and be visible. So is it, does it have a list of the board members? Does it have the email accounts for those board members? Does it have a way to sign up for the newsletter? Does it have a way to sign up for the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment newsletter? Does it have a way to find the Department of Neighborhood Empowerment? Does it have a way to, I mean, these are just basics. All of you get all the agendas, all the minutes, like make that list. Because who's gone camping? Okay, you go camping once, then you learn to always make the list. <laughs> <laughs> just make the list. What to bring. Yeah. So just make that list. And agree, our website's going to have all these elements. And if you want help, I'll give you a list. You want help? Yes. Okay. Um, I think the two, the two really important ones, how to sign up for a newsletter and how to sign up for the department's newsletter, because they're looking at the website, but they want more, mm. right? Which brings us to the uh, database. But, uh, so these are policies that your neighborhood council should come up with. One is the philosophical one, what's going to be on the website. The next one is going to be, what are you going to post? Like, what's your posting policy? Anything in the department's newsletter? Boop, fair game. Mayor's message, fair game. Like you can have a bunch of fair game topics that no one has to ask for permission, but then start slicing it down. So when they start referring to Panorama City, anything that has the word Panorama City in it, would you post that? So you can decide if that's your policy. You want to put, uh, you know, you see elite reports. LAPD, it's part of the city family, right? You want to post stuff from the local prosecutor, local cert. And then who has access? The board should decide. Are you the president? Yes. Do you have access? Yes. And the board says you're in charge, right? Yes. Okay. Who directs the webmaster is the next one, because everyone's going to try and direct the webmaster. And the best way to direct the webmaster is to have one point of contact. I mean, nobody likes two bosses. Three, because they could vote. But So who has access? And it could be the president, it could also be the um, uh, signatory, chair. and it could also be the um, chair. outreach chair. Yeah, chair, right? But you'll have a hierarchy, and you got to have a hierarchy because when it comes down to it, when I say who has access, I mean who has passwords. And you can have a, a hierarchy of passwords. Like as a committee chair, you can post committee agendas, but only on one page. We, so, ha we actually have a notebook with the policy, the um, access regimen, and the passwords, so that if somebody moves on to another position in right. life, all they have to do is pass that notebook on to whoever takes over. That's a good idea. He saw how much fame and fortune came to Mr. Dwiggins when he knew what a URL was. So he <laughs> brought up the legacy book, which is a best practice for um, neighborhood councils is to get a three ring binder, mm -hmm. two ring, four ring, mm -hmm. yeah, three ring, three ring. Huh? It's cheap and easy to get. <laughs> and um, this is the best practice. And any, 
I mean, any uh, board, if this were a neighborhood council board, ideally there should be a legacy book right here with the bylaws and the standing rules and the roster, and anyone can walk in and could literally take over without having to, are you on the board? Are you my mother? Like, you know what I mean? Do you, do you know that book? No one knows that book. Yes, no, I know that book. Do you? Okay. So that's a legacy book. It has, and I know that I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm promoting paper here, but seriously carry the book. Uh, we got locked out of a neighbor council facility once, so we had our meeting in the parking lot because it's posted. We can't move. But if you got the book, like who's here? You can call a roll right out of it. You don't have to do it from memory. And the second thing is every committee should have a le legacy book because why are you reinventing the carnival? And you know that stuff is sacred. The dunking booth always goes here. It always goes here. You know what I mean? So much stuff has already been done. Just put it on paper and have the outreach committee, the communications group, let them have a legacy book. So Carol and I were talking about this. Uh, community impact statements, MERs, like all the stuff that you need could be in that book. All of the policies, so there's no confusion. If you walk in, Thank you so much. Like when a volunteer comes in and says, "I'll help," you know the the, the, the neighbor council board usually, "Oh my gosh, the jackpot!" Right? <laughs> then they never come back because they get so much verbal and requests and instructions. But imagine just saying, "Take two weeks to read the book. Come back for the next meeting, and we'll rock and roll." So that's an awesome idea. Uh, you're you're no longer the teacher's bad idea. No, no, no. Too long lasting, huh? <laughs> So, um, contracts. Now, you can either draft someone like Elliot, a volunteer, and any volunteer can do whatever they want to do. It's not a contract issue for a neighborhood council. I'm sure there's an exception. There's an exception to every rule. I don't know what it is. But Elliot's doing the website, right? Yep. Great. Right. Thank you very much. How's that going? And by the way, it still belongs to the neighborhood council, right? Right. It's there. It's an asset. It's a brand. It's a... So, um, you're still probably having to use a little bit of money to pay for the bleep, bleep, bleep. You, you might pay for some things and that's the neighbor council that, that owns them and pays for them but that's a volunteer relationship those of you that are looking for a web person mm -hmm. right now the city of LA is an interesting creature and you aren't allowed to enter into contracts and mr. Kuzman brought up a couple of interesting ones what about a domain name Contracts have a few different legal descriptions that Jeff Brill can help you more with. It has to be a certain dollar amount. It has to be a certain duration. And I already started to fall asleep on myself when I started talking about contracts. <laughs> so the second one is, for example, a phone line. Is that a contract? Because you know they say would you, you know, for a one-year contract it's $45 or DSL. Mm -hmm. So we'll take those up with Jeff. But for today, we're talking about the fact that at 500 bucks a month, that's a $6,000 a year contract. You don't have the authority to enter into that contract. Only the city of LA, mm -hmm. in its, right, in its uh, complexity. So they set up a contract. For example, you can hire temporary help through Apple One. You can hire interpreters and translators through a contract. It goes out to bid, there's a process. But it's the city of LA, so when a, when a vendor gets to the, you know, has a contract with the city of LA, it's kind of a big deal, there's a lot to it. In this particular case, there are